Hello, all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today we are going to go over basically all of the things that I think are interesting in S-Part that I didn't get to talk to you last time. So if you haven't seen the first video that I made on S-Part or Spart, uh, whichever you prefer, the 3D particle system for Game Maker, I would obviously recommend going and doing that. We are going to be t uh, continuing where we left off uh, that time. Uh, we've, uh, we did some basic stuff, setting up, like, a system of particles for, like, rain, weather, and, uh, a, a little fire emitter, uh, that went out after, like, 10 seconds. And today we're going to be taking things a little bit farther. Uh, let's see. So, what do I want to do first? So, firstly, um, I'm just going to, uh, I talked a little bit about this in the previous video, but I didn't really, uh, I didn't really show it off or anything, but I do want to do that just because I think it's interesting. So, different particle emitter shapes. Um, the fire particle emitter, uh, in particular is what I'm going to look at. Uh, we basically just set our uh, fire particles to emit from a point, and that's all right, but it's not the most inspired. Uh, instead, if you wanted to have something like a ring of fire, um, we could do something like, let's give the X scale and Y scale, so the scale of the emitter, uh, the size of the emitter on the X, Y plane. Let's make that something like, I don't know, 150 and 150. Remember, if you want to set the emitter size, you're going to need to set the uh, scale arguments in the in the set region uh, method on the emitter instead of in the matrix build for weird, annoying game maker reasons. Um, we can set the shape to instead of cube. Um, actually, let me just start with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna have it stream a uh, thousand particles per second instead of a hundred because this is a much bigger region now. Uh, we're going to um, by doing this have the particles spawning over like a cube region, uh, which is all right. Also, I can move this, like, down closer to the ground, uh, because I'm gonna want to actually see where they're originating from now. Um, but if we wanted to make it, for example, uh, let's say, spark shape circle, uh, that would give us something more akin to a ring of fire. Uh, I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, let me actually make this a little bit bigger. Let's double that again on each axis, make that a ring of fire. And the ring of fire, uh, can, can now have fire particles em em like emitting from a from a circular region uh which i think is pretty cool and there are other spart shapes if you would like uh there's um cube and circle we saw those there's also cylinder if you want like a a filled in uh cylinder like uh like we we just had fire uh being like emitted from around the perimeter of the circle uh cylinder will fill that in will fill that shape in and we can actually uh, increase the number of particles that we're going to stream even further here. Um, this is a uh, very dangerous. Don't stand in there if you don't want to have your like face melted. Um, and we can also do what was the last one? Sphere. All right. So that's going to be. Uh, this will probably look pretty similar um, to uh, to cylinder because we have basically like a flat shape. Uh, we don't have volume to this. But oh, uh, those are the sh the four. Uh, spark emitter shapes. Uh, we can go back to uh, to circle if we want to have this really uh, cool looking ring of fire effect. So that's nice. This is also a lot of particles, by the way. And uh, let me just have a look. If I if I bump up the emitter lifetime, um, exactly how uh, exactly how expensive this is going to be. So at the moment, I have a, an Intel Arc B570, which is uh, I, I guess we can call that an entry level GPU. Uh, in current year and if I were to just like stand here and I, I wanted that to last longer thank you very much uh, let me set this to negative one so it doesn't evaporate oh it's uh, the tab key did I did I have the tab key killing the particle emitter um, apparently I do all right let's uncomment that and let's just look at my uh, my GPU task manager, uh, my, my GPU utilization and task manager. This is actually lighter than I thought it was going to be. For 10,000 particles per step, hey. um, I thought it was going to be a little bit heavier than this. And, uh, of course, if you were running this on something like an older laptop with an on-GPU, it might be a different story. But, all right, good testament to uh, how well Spart performs, uh, honestly, if you're just continuously streaming uh, from an emitter instead of, uh, like, bursting particles left and right. All right, let's uh, let's knock that down a little bit. Let's set the lifetime back to ten, and we can move on to other things. 
So I think there's going to be two, like, um, categories of things that I like to talk about today. One is going to be mesh particles. So I mentioned in the last video that you can have a 3D object as your particles that you use in uh, Inspart. It doesn't have to be a 2D billboard or quad. Um, if I go into data files and if I go and just basically copy um, this here little dog object. So this is a, this is a very simple dog-shaped 3D object. Um, if I can, can I, like, open this in... Um, like Windows Picture Viewer or something like that. Windows wants to open it with VS Code because .obj is like an intermediate code compilation file, but... Alright, fine. Let me, uh... Let me pull out my own solution to this and load it into Penguin, which is uh, my, little, my little 3D object viewer. Alright. So this is a little dog-shaped object. Uh, it doesn't have any texture, it doesn't have any color. It's fairly simple, it's 290 triangles. Um, this came from uh, one of uh, Kenny.nl's free 3D object asset packs. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a cat model, uh, or otherwise I would make the joke that it's raining cats and dogs. But if we copy that into the uh, the Game Maker data files um, for, uh, for this project. Anyway, so let me go up where I've defined the particle type, and let me comment out type underscore rain dot set sprite, uh, at least temporarily. Uh, I'm going to say type underscore rain dot set mesh instead. And if you've added your dog dot obj to your uh, game maker project data files, uh, you can just pass in a string as the file name that you want to load for this, and it will load it into the um, it'll load it into the system. Uh, you could also just pass it like a data buffer containing all the uh, uh, vertex information for dog.obj um, if you'd like to load it ahead, ahead of time. Uh, there is a handy function spart, what was it, spart load, spart load obj to buffer, uh, which will do basically that. If you've got, for example, multiple particle types that will use the same, um, the same object and you don't want to have to load it multiple times, uh, you can just use that function and you can, um, you can pass the return value of that into this set mesh function, but I'm just going to give it the file name. And uh, we also have the number of particles per batch. So this is sort of like the uh, batch size array that you pass to the Spart system when you construct that, uh, but it's going to be a, a limit that's a lot lower. Uh, Snitter hard-coded the limit to 255. I don't know if there's a technical reason for that, like the number of um, like indices that you use to index each particle in the, in the Spart shader, or if that's just like a convenient upper limit. But we can set the batch, um, the number per batch to 255, and um, I think we can be on our way. So if I just run this without saying sp set sprite, we're actually going to get a crash uh, because you do need a, a texture to use with the uh, the mesh. Um, if you just set the like the dog object sprite to SPR part rain, it's going to look pretty weird. Um, but um, I'm just going to go and uh, you can actually like almost not even see that like you can see pixels falling but because of the way that the uh the texture works you can like it's almost impossible to see what those are anyway let me go just create myself a sprite i'm just going to call this spr text dog and i'm just going to make this like brownish um let's go with a like a light brown dog fur color uh, i'm going to slap this on its own separate texture page as you often do with 3d vertex buffers uh, we can go and set our sprite to SPR text dog. And now, if I run this, we are going to have uh, the dog objects falling from the sky. So, they're kind of boring right now, honestly. Um, one, it would help if they were a little bit bigger. And two, it would help if they fell a little bit slower. Uh, let me just make the, like, the min size like 32 and the max size like 64. So, we'll have a little bit of random variation in the dog particle size. Uh, you can use pretty much all of the, um, like, the sprite particle controls, like lifetime, uh, size, orientation, direction for mesh particles, uh, just the same as you would have with, uh, with 2D quad particles. Um, let's see, this, sh this should at least be a little bit easier to see. All right, so we've now got, all right, that's actually a little too big. Let's maybe not Let's maybe not go all the way up to 64. How about a middle ground 48 for uh, for the particle size? All right, much better. 
So, uh, we've got dogs running from the sky. If I make them last a little bit longer, uh, they'll actually reach the ground. Alright, so we can, uh, as I said, set things like the direction, the orientation, so on and so forth. If I say type underscore rain dot set orientation, uh, we can set the... I'm gonna give this uh, like a completely random orientation. Say the min star angle is zero, uh, max star angle is 360, angle speed. Uh, I can make them rotate in some direction. I don't actually know on which axis uh, off the top of my head they'll rotate, but if I let's just make it like 360 per second, so it'll do a full revolution per second. Uh, angle acceleration, uh, no acceleration, please. And relative, I'm gonna set that to true, I guess. At least that's what I did in my sample project, and it seemed to work. Uh, we uh, we can run this, and now we're gonna have the dogs tumbling as they fall down from the sky. All right, it is raining cats and dogs minus minus the cats. Feel free to go ahead and um, find a, a small low poly uh, 3D cat model so that you can actually make that joke properly. Um, there's a couple of methods that you can set on particles that are specific to meshes. Uh, for example, if you want lighting, uh, there's a set mesh lighting method, and this works a lot like the basic like GPU. Um, all right, it actually took me a minute to like remember what these function names were. Uh, so like the built-in uh, shader lights that you can define in GameMaker, draw a light, define direction, draw a light, define ambient. Uh, you can only define an ambient color and a single directional light for um, uh, for mesh particles, and they're going to be vertex shader lights, so you, you can't have uh, the slightly more expensive smooth fragment shader lighting uh, using this. I assume for performance reasons and also because why these are particles for crying out loud. Uh, so let's say the ambient color can be, let's go with uh, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So this is going to be like a um, like a, a darkish gray is going to be the ambient color. Uh, we can say the full lighting color can be something like, uh, like a much brighter gray. So that's going to be the lit color or the unlit color. Um, the, um, the light direction X, I'm just going to define the light direction to like negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. So a light that's shining towards the world origin from the middle of the room. And I, uh, I believe that's all we need now. So if I if I run this, uh, we can see that the dogs have some amount of vertex lighting on them, smooth lighting on them. Uh, it's per face. It's not going to be interpolated over each triangle. And uh, that's a little bit more interesting than what we had before. All right. Why are there dogs raining from the sky? I don't know. So there's also, uh, if I say type underscore rain dot set mesh, uh, call mode, if you want to set the calling direction forward or backward or calling off uh, for whatever reason. And there's also a set mesh rotation axis. I actually was not able to figure out what this did. Uh, you can define an axis of of a rotation. I don't know if this like affects the axis that set orientation rotates over or anything like that. Um, but that might be worth experimenting with if you want to be able to like precisely control the axis of, of rotation uh, like this. Uh, I'm not going to try and reverse engineer what that does now. And I think that's all that I want to do for mesh particles, uh, at least at the moment. So there's one more thing that I'd like to talk about, which is uh, secondary particle emission. That's something that you can do in GameMaker. You can have particles emit other particles. Um, you can also do that in Spart, at least to a limited degree. You can only have a, uh, a single secondary particle emission. You can't like infinitely chain particle emissions together. Um, arguably, you shouldn't even be allowed to do that in Game Maker, but I believe you are, which can pretty easily crash your game if you're not careful. Uh, so let me go and I'm going to, um, how do I want to do this? So I'm going to make the, uh, the rain particles, the dog particles, that sounds terrible. I'm going to make the, uh, the rain particles emit fire as they fall. So we can have like, I don't know, meteorites falling from the sky or something like that. Um, so after I define type underscore fire. Uh, we can say type underscore rain dot set uh, step is what it's called. Set step uh, instead of, um, actually, now that I think about it, I think Game Maker calls it that too. But type underscore rain dot set step. And this is going to take an argument of a um, another particle type. So we can say type underscore fire. And it's also going to take the number of secondary particles that you emit, I believe, per second. Uh, so I'm going to say that we're going to emit, say, 100 secondary particles per second, which is a little more than one per frame. Uh, important to note that we're going to want to 
Uh, we're going to want to define this before we have the primary rain particle uh, set to an emitter. So previously, I was uh, I was setting up the rain emitter and having the rain emitter stream rain particles before I set up the fire particle. But if you uh, if you just do this, if you do that and then set the secondary emission type, it just won't do anything. Uh, I am also going to comment out the uh, the original fire emitter uh, because I don't need that, and I'm also going to go into the uh, just comment out the system fire draw because that's not doing anything right now. Um, so this won't do anything, right? So we've got dogs falling from the sky, and there's there's nothing coming out behind them. But if I were to take the rain emitter and if I were to set that up and have it. Um, have it start to stream particles after defining the rain secondary particle emission, um, we can actually have trails of fire uh, following the dogs around. This is the weirdest weather ever. Um, so again, this looks something like if you want like a meteor falling from the sky, shooting star particles or something like that. If you want like a comet head and then something falling behind it. Uh, if you want like a spark and then smoke trailing behind it, uh, you might use something like this. Uh, secondary particle emission is definitely not an uncommon thing to, uh, to need to do when you're setting up particle systems. Um, and you can, uh, you can do that pretty easily in Spark. Uh, I think I said this before, but you can only do this once. You can't chain multiple particle types together. So, like, I can't have the rain emit fire, and I can't then have the fire emit something else. It just won't do it. But it's still pretty nice to be able to do this. So... Uh, that's really all there is. I don't believe there's anything else um, in uh, any other like advanced systems in uh, the systems or the uh, the emitters or the particle types or anything else that I really wanted to talk about. I'm going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, uh, look for the link to the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. I will have a link to both this sample project and also um, the uh, Spark uh, GitHub repository, which also contains its own sample projects. Uh, down there. I like to make videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker. I think raining dogs uh, that are followed by bursts of fire are about as weird as it's going to get, but aside from that, if you're interested in any other uh, 3D stuff or shader stuff, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, you should all go check out Wizard Ducks and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below as well. I hope you all enjoyed that. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Game Art Indie, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.